<laughs> okay, so uh, you know, age is uh, uh, no bar for Mark Mobius. I mean, could easily pass off as I mean, I think 60, 65, maybe younger. Uh, I mean, amazing. Uh, 20 points on uh, the Nifty 17,045 is where we are at. Hemang Jani is with us of Motilal Osor Financial Services. Uh, Hemang, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this is neither here nor there. No clear uh, direction. A lot of two-way price action, uh, bounces, sold into, sell-offs being bought. Yeah. Uh, but just 20 points to show for all of it. Near term, what's your sense? So thanks for having me, uh, Prashant. I think uh, you know because of the kind of sell-off that uh, we have seen and the multiple things happening around us at the same time. you might see the volatility continue for few days as you know situation is evolving but uh, our our sense is that uh, the uh, you know case for a significant downside is not there because of the way things are and because you know uh, the the sense that we are getting is that the uh, the corporates the markets and most of the people are far more uh, you know uh, careful and equipped to deal with any small disruption that we may have if situation uh, you know gets worse so uh, we take this as some sort of a normal correction and uh, as we see let's say next one week or so you see some stability some more clarity on how the new virus uh, pans out there is going to be some comfort and and you might see some uh, you know interest back in the market uh, within let's say a week or so Okay, all right, uh, Himanga. So you, it appears like you're getting your shopping list ready. Uh, you know, if you get a bit of a dip, uh, would HDFC Life be part of that shopping list? I'm just looking at it. You know, if I compare HDFC Life with a couple of other life insurance companies that are listed, it's been a relative underperformer in this year. Uh, would you be a buyer out here? Uh, so uh, Nigel, our feel is that uh, this 10% kind of a correction at Nifty level. and maybe a little more at the mid cap uh, you know broader market level definitely presents a great opportunity and people should be uh, looking out for uh, you know range of uh, sectors and stocks rather than just looking at uh, you know one uh, life insurance as a space we do like the the insurance sector and uh, we feel that uh, sbi life and prudential life are uh, extremely well placed uh, and 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 that would definitely be some sort of allocation stock for us but i think uh, you know whether it is consumer uh, names or it uh, or pharma uh, you know these are the two or three sectors where we think that people really would like to have some more allocation because the reopen trade uh, where most of the investors were heavily positioned on whether it's travel tourism multiplexes uh, you know media uh, there will be some sort of a, a rebalancing that would require that would be required given the new developments so that is how the market will behave in terms of uh, reallocation from the reopen trade to the you know telecom pharma it names okay uh, himang uh, grafnon what about uh, these diagnostic stocks uh, because uh, you know now with mandatory testing uh, uh, at airport and uh, you know uh, in general uh, you know p- p- more testing going forward uh, do, do you think that they are in for one more round of buying the, the kind of buying that we saw last year definitely uh, both from a tactical uh, perspective given this development uh, and of course uh, because you know the lifestyle changes around us are going to be far more prominent uh, you know as we have gone through this entire covid uh, definitely diagnostics uh, space will uh, become an important part of that uh, journey so whether it's dr lal path lab or you know whole whole most of companies uh, there is going to be a lot of interest apart from the hospital stocks so apollo hospital is something that we feel uh, is extremely well placed in the current environment and this is mind you not just uh, about covid but but about overall healthcare and the kind of uh, you know prominence it will have in the current scenario so definitely people would have some allocation to those names <clears throat> okay i mean uh... you know one one segment of the population which is getting tested and which i think is going to get added as schools reopen kids are getting tested right i mean uh, we're all glad schools are finally opening up but i think uh, pretty much everywhere as things uh, uh, open up most the places are open but i think uh, schools is one large area one large segment uh, which is still opening up in phases and uh, most schools are demanding for example rtp i can tell you that from my personal experience himang uh, Uh, just a quick word on Bharti and Idea. 
uh, any any thoughts i mean bharati is about 740 idea which was you know battered and beaten and needed the most amount of help has gotten some help with uh, you know the two larger players increasing tariffs idea has also affected tariffs is this the kind of reaction you expected to see uh, post all of this or you think there is more coming so prashant first of all overall we think that it's a big development for the telecom industry and uh we think that uh, the tariff hike uh, is a very big uh, momentous thing and you will see far more you know uh, tariff hikes as we move into the next few months and quarters uh having said that what we must bear in mind is that uh, the manner in which reliance uh, like jio has announced the price hike uh, there is a case for some sort of a down trading at the lower end at 179 rupees uh, you know price point there is a case for some sort of a down trading Uh, which would have some bearing and most importantly if you uh, see the ebitda impact bharti will have the maximum ebitda impact because even last time when they had announced a similar price hike their ebitda grew more than 26 uh, to 30% whereas in case of reliance and vodafone the actual impact on the ebitda uh, could be much less so we think that uh, we should have more allocation towards telecom given this development and given the circumstances around us and bharti would be our number one uh, you know pick in that followed by reliance and vodafone would be more of a tactical play because retail investors like a small price stock and it might give you a 10 15% 20% kind of a move but don't see that is a big promising story as such Okay, uh, stay with us, Hemang. By the way, uh, you know, from the broader markets, a couple of stocks are really moving well. HAL, pull up the intraday chart out there. That stock has moved to the high point of the day. It's now an F no counter, so that's recovered all the losses. It's currently moved higher. And Tata Alexi, I remember the start of today, the stock was down nine ten percent odd. Now it's down only around two and a half percent. So from the low point of the day, we've seen a big recovery in there. Throw in there an Inox Leisure as well. The stock was down more than six percent uh, early morning. Now, in fact, it's up closer to around a percent. So the intraday chart will tell you the picture out there. Spiking up as we speak. Well, we'll slip into a short break. You come back, and we'll take you through the final ten minutes of trade. But as we do that, here's something that you, our viewers, must take note of. CNBC TV18 and the National Stock Exchange have come together to promote investor awareness through a very special campaign, Informed Investor. Now that empowers you to make the right decisions with your money. Investors need to check the frequency of account settlement that they have opted for. If you've opted for a running account, well, you need to ensure that your broker settles your account. And send statements of accounts regularly, and in any case, no later than 90 days. But in case you have opted for 30 days settlement, then your broker needs to settle and send your statements of accounts within 30 days. Well, India has picked up another wicket, uh, you know, in our match against uh, New Zealand. Uh, seven down now, New Zealand. Uh, Ashwin picks up another wicket. He's bowled around 22 overs today and given only 30 runs. So good performance coming in there. But for the markets on the whole, well, uh, we're up closer on 25 points, but the pharma sector has been in focus. Granules has moved to the low point of the day as we speak. Now that one selling off, uh, you know, volumes are picking up as well. So pull up the entire chart of granules. But on the flip side, you have Ipka Laboratories that's moved to the high point of the day. Hemang, uh, any view on any of these two? Ipka Laboratory suddenly that stock is moving with good momentum. So Nigel, Ipka, uh, the recent numbers have not been that impressive, and more importantly, talking about uh, the entire API space, what we have seen is that uh, the raw material prices also have kind of uh, gone up, and the you know the API prices for most of the companies is actually not trending that higher. So we feel that. the larger companies at this point of time are better placed so the names like uh, maybe a sun pharma or a dv's lab uh, or or something like a gland pharma are better placed uh, and dr reddy's of course compared to the pure api players where you are seeing a bit of a weakness in the prices and we are not seeing any incremental triggers in the current scheme of things so we would stay away from the pure api players and stick to names like Sun, DVs, Doctor Eddies, and Gland Pharma within the pharma space. Okay, Himang, we will leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us, and have a good evening. Uh, well, let's uh, do a recap uh, now. You know, really, you could look at both ways.